Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com bar inclinada schedule. Sade program pesh kar dehan anek pashava. Kirpa dekho suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Just you feel beautiful inside, I guess, because there's nothing really. The Ganges you can have everywhere. Not just that mountain. <laughs> nothing new in, in India, in the Himalaya. I just feel good there. Feel so free, so free and so light, light-hearted. Please keep watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Oluxis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Salam is hello in Karakalpa, one of the main languages of Kurakalpakistan. My name is Anira. The affable people of Kurakalpakistan applaud your contributions to a balanced and happy life for those around you. In western Uzbekistan, the largely desert region of Kurakalpakistan is located near the Aral Sea in the Amodaria Basin. A special landmark in Kurakalpakistan is the UNESCO designated site known as the Lower Amodaria State Biosphere Reserve. This nearly 69,000 hectare area encompasses part of the Amodaria River at the foothills of the Sultan Uzdak mountain range. The biosphere is strictly protected to conserve the riverside's unique old-growth togai woodlands as well as many rare and endangered animal and plant species. The Karakalpak people originated in Neolithic era with the fortresses of Jampikola and Ayaskola still standing as a testament to the civilizations of ancient times. Further evidence of this rich cultural heritage can be found in places like the Nukus Museum of Art, located in the region's capital city. This museum is home to a remarkable display of some 90,000 exhibits, ranging from traditional jewelry to paintings, all collected by artist Igor Savitsky, who also contributed his own work. The traditional music of Kurakalpakustan contains lyrical poems that represent the core values of the culture, based on rich mythological and epic traditions. Two styles of music characterize the songs, jirao or throat singing and baxi. Among the most famous jirao musicians was Jen Jirao, an 18th century singer storyteller who is still referred by the Karakalpak people today. Baxi musicians include Atjiniyas, who lived in the 19th century, and Berda, considered the founder of Karakalpak literature. It is an honor to share a glimpse of hospitable Kurakalpakustan with you, warm hearted viewers. We pray that your lives be filled with miracles.
For decades, Supreme Master Ching Hai has illuminated our world with her divine teachings. A fully enlightened master, she imparts the Kuan Yin method of meditation to those desiring to immediately discover the God nature within to achieve in one lifetime eternal liberation from the cycle of transmigration. The Kuan Yin method has been practiced by all enlightened masters such as the worshipped world-honored one Shakyamuni Buddha, the worshipped son of God Jesus Christ, the venerated master and philosopher Confucius, the venerated Lord Krishna, the venerated master and philosopher Lao Tzu, the venerated Lord Mahavira, the beloved prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and many more. Supreme Master Ching Hai emphasizes that if we always remember God, render selfless service to others, and follow the laws of the universe, we will reach our highest potential as humans and truly understand our purpose on the earth. An extraordinary living example of compassion, she lovingly and regularly sends material and financial assistance to refugees the homeless, natural disaster victims, and others needing relief. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thanks all special individuals, organizations, leaders, and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness, wishing you the best. Supreme Master Ching Hai receives love and recognition from various organizations, media, governments, individuals, and many awards, such as the 2006 Guzi Peace Prize, considered the Nobel Peace Prize of the East, the World Spiritual Leadership Award in 1994, the Mahavira Award in 2008, February 22nd and October 25th, both proclaimed as the Supreme Master Ching Hai Day, an honorary citizen of the United States, etc., and has been honored throughout the years with numerous other awards and accolades for her outstanding philanthropic and humanitarian deeds.
etc. We apologize for not being able to show many other awards and honors for lack of space and time. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thanks all special individuals, organizations, leaders, and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness, wishing you the best. A true voice for our beautiful animal friends, Supreme Master Ching Hai promotes the peaceful, loving, plant-based diet and envisions with humanity's awakening to the sacredness of all life, a tranquil and glorious all-vegan world where animals and people live in respectful harmony. Her initiatives included alternative living flyer distribution, the international vegan restaurants Loving Hut, vegan food companies, vegan food products, Supreme Master Television, as well as writing and speaking to influential government and media leaders, participating in televised conferences on climate change, etc. Whether we are aware of it or not, her efforts have had an enormous influence on global awareness of the animal-friendly lifestyle and how this benevolent way can bring lasting peace among nations while saving our planet from climate change and disasters. Supreme Master Ching Hai has traveled worldwide and held discourses with the public and her disciples on a variety of spiritual topics. Today, we are blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled Heaven is Here and Now, Part 404 on Between Master and Disciples given in, in English on October 6, 2019 in Taiwan, also known as Formosa. In drums allow also you can rent a room very cheaply, also mud house, you know. But I did not really enjoy that much, like in Rishikesh. Maybe the ambience, you know, the atmosphere, no? Everybody would, when they have to be vegan, they had no choice. <laughs> what for you go there promoting veganism? They had no choice. Hmm? There are lots of vegetarians also there, so... There are a lot of what? Vegetarians. Mm -hmm. And we went there to do relief work. Oh. So that's oh, by the way, uh, okay. over there they don't sell eggs, they don't sell alcohol, but maybe some milk or not. Oh, that I did not know, that I did not drink. But I like that place so much, I don't know why. It just felt so good. <laughs> it felt good inside, you know. I went, uh, in daytime I went to meditate, you know, on the Ganges or on the bank of the Ganges. Nighttime I come back, make my own chapati over the wood fire, you know, with three rocks. And the plate small like that. I have only one plate. I use it for everything. Can cook chapati on it, you know. I make my own chapati. Not this kind of plate. It's metal. Mm -hmm. About about this small, no? and very thin, easy to carry. I put make chapati. Very easy. <laughs> the wood you could collect from a forest, you know, next to my house. And then just a few tweaks, not enough to cook me well, three chapati, uh, peanut butter and cucumber or oh, tomato. Mm. Felt good. <laughs> mm. Felt very good. Not so good, it was really good. Mm. <laughs> I still remember that feeling, you know. So contented. Mm. Felt at home. <laughs> yeah. Nobody bother you. Some Westerners, they came also for the same purpose, you know? They didn't talk a lot, they didn't try to bury, bury you, they didn't try to make a boyfriend, girlfriend out of you, nothing. Sometimes they brought their own girlfriend anyway, so... I was feeling very, very free over there. Yeah. And very little money left, I couldn't live there, you know? 
I like it so much. I really compare that life to this life. I'd rather eat less samosa and stay there. <laughs> eat a lot, you know. It's a lot of responsibility nowadays. Not the same, no? Nah? Here is different, of course. But if I have a choice, I go back there and live there and again at my age. <laughs> With the umbrella going down. <laughs> yeah. Wait for me. <laughs> Get me a horse, please. <laughs> That's the best place that I, I can remember. I live in some ashram, but I don't remember. I don't want to go back. But I want to go back there. That's the only place in India that I would like to go back to visit or to live, you know? To live there. Alone, eh? Not with you, eh? <laughs> Don't think about it. <laughs> if I take all of you up there, then I will forget that place immediately after. <laughs> I would just say, okay, beautiful place. Have a nice day. <laughs> Say you're not. <laughs> it's good also, it will cure me of the longing for that place, you know. I would never remember again. <laughs> oh, yeah, now talking about, about it, I really like that place. But um, it's a long way from Delhi, huh? Mm. Nine hours, yeah. And maybe you have to change buses, it doesn't go direct. Yes, you have to change. Mm -hmm. You have to change buses, no? And the buses is made from Qing Dynasty or something. <laughs> Be careful, your back, your bum. And if you think riding horse cart is romantic, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the horse, he does his business right in front of your nose, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> And they even save it, all your journey. They don't just let it drop on the street. Of course, they save it because it's fuel, man. It's, it's fertilizer, it's fuel, it's whatever they can use. It's in for the wall, they put it on the wall to make the wall. So it's warm and the insects don't go near. The cow dung, horse dung, or whatever dung is all done. <laughs> it's all very valuable in the Himalaya, especially they can use it for fuel, you know, cooking. Yeah, and then they put it on the wall. Yeah, make it, make it like cement. So, so they save it. It's not like, okay, poop and it's done, and then you have fresh air. No. <laughs> it continues your whole journey wherever you go. It's not as romantic as it looks, telling you. <laughs> what means my God? <laughs> That's the way they live, huh? They don't have taxi there. I didn't see any. Maybe in the town, I didn't see. Either you do that, or you take the number 11 bus. <laughs> I often need it. Yeah. I don't know here, I don't feel like walking, but over there I walk all the time. And it felt like nothing. Maybe because I had no choice. I didn't have a lot of money. <laughs> Over there walking, it's like a pleasure, you know? I remember that. It felt like you walk, but you don't really walk. Your feet don't drag at all. It felt very light. And, and then uh, the fresh air, you know? Not a lot of cars. The Rishikas, especially where I live, that area, no cars. Horse. Yeah. Well, at least I lived once, one time in the Himalayas. I feel very lucky already. That place is most beautiful. Nothing really, I don't know, I just feel beautiful. Just you feel beautiful inside, I guess, because there's nothing really. The Ganges you can have everywhere, not just that mountain, <laughs> nothing new in, in India, in the Himalaya. I just feel good there. Felt so free, so free and so light, light-hearted. Go home and sleep on the roof, you know, make a chapati, Go to the Ganges, take a bath, and put your clothes on the, on the rock, hard rock, man, and wrap yourself with a sarong and then wait in the cave somewhere. 
whenever you finish meditation, you go out, you get your clothes, put it on, da da da, go home. Mm. Happy, happy. And then make a chapati, mm? cook a little tea or chai, something, and then go to the roof, <laughs> meditate. Ah, oh, wonderful life. Mm. I was very skinny then because I didn't have a lot of food. Just that staple food every day. You buy a small bag of flour, you mix it with water, a little salt. Mm, you make it into dough. Rao? Oh, not rao, who cares? <laughs> and I put it on, on the fire, you know. You warm yourself meanwhile, and then a few minutes, it's done, huh? You put peanut butter on it, or whatever, I don't know. What else? <laughs> Mostly peanut butter, because I heard it's very nutritious, you know. So it's a very economical. And then with the cucumber, huh? It's hot and the cucumber is cool, you know, so um, yum, yum, yum. Then after that, uh, you just go up to the roof and up <laughs> to the higher level. Wow, that was a good life, huh? Don't you think it's good? Sounds very good. Sounds good? Yes, sir. I don't know if you can live like that. Sometimes when I was growing up, we used to go to those places and live like that. You did? Yes, not, not like that much, but yes, in the mountains and just doing nothing, just meditating oh. or just roaming around. Yeah, that place is so free. There's some Westerners who come there and live, but they didn't care about cooking. On the fire, they go out to restaurant and eat, you know. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Even restaurants are cheap. I love that place, really. I don't know why, it just... I felt so good, you yeah? Come home right in front of my house. It was an empty space, you know, just, just dirt, nothing. I, I put three stones there and put some little fire, cook my tea, <laughs> chapati. Yeah. I felt so free. Oh, man. And now I'm very free, free to grab, <laughs> for everybody <laughs> to grab. Oh. Would you like to live like that? Hello? No. After pushing it. Yes, no. Okay, la. <laughs> Even though we live in caves, we have light, electricity, and food delivered to our mouth. Already one or two of your brothers think we are too ascetic. If you live like that, only a cup of chapati a day. You like? You would? I'm sure you would. Yes. You know, I think you would like it maybe one week. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday. Nam <laughs> Salo. Can you predict how long they last? <laughs> hmm? You think they'll last long? <laughs> If you like lonely life, and if you are very much inside, then you don't feel anything that pulls you back to this life. I didn't want to go. I don't know why I did. Hmm. Maybe no more money. Telling you about all this, I really miss that place. Not the place, I don't know, miss the lifestyle that I had. When I live in the Ramsala, I also cook for myself, of course. But I don't know, it's not the same. Over there, I cook too complicated. I bought pot and pan, huh? cheap ones. And then I cook rice, and I went hunting for this um, soya texture, and I cooked. Remembering how we eat in China and all that, and in Taiwan. But it didn't taste good at all. Didn't have anything, just salt. <laughs> I thought I would like it. I imagine, you know, uh, it didn't taste good. So I bought the champa, this uh, barley flour, and it tasted better. You are in Tibetan community, maybe you are influenced by the atmosphere of the people there. So champa tastes good. Champa, you know, you um, buy this uh, barley flour and you mix it with water, that's it. A little salt. <laughs> it tastes good. Or you put it in your tea, no? Or you buy um, bread, you know? 
Also, barley bread. They don't have the bread we have here. In the Tibetan community it tastes also very good. But I didn't eat a lot, though. I remember I didn't eat a lot. So when I came down to the plane, I was very skinny. Okay, guys. Say your nara. Thank you for your company. Cheers. <laughs> Love you guys. Thanks for your company. Okay, I must go now and do my job, other job. Mm. Thank you. Sunday is a good break, huh? Not bad. Uh, you guys don't complain, okay? We all have our destiny and our special place to stay. Sometimes forcing the issue causes uh, friction, okay? Friction in the energy, yeah? And in peace, community peace. How to ma? Ngon hả? Ăn được hả? Không giống Việt Nam nhưng mà ăn cũng được hả? Sư phụ ăn cũng quen rồi. <cười> mới hồi mới ra ngoài nước thì còn nhớ bây giờ hết nhớ. Không không nhớ cái gì nữa. <cười> Chào nhé. Ừ. Mọi người. Hai. Hai. Đi vào nào mà. Hảo chưa mà hải hậu mà. Ờ Theo mình chủ tập phan hải hậu mà. Chủ cô mà, cô diễn nhạc. Ok. Hảo, oh, thank you. Tôi sẽ Fears. We appreciate your company for today's episode entitled Heaven is Hearing Now, Part 4 of 4, on Between Master and Disciples. Coming up next is The Supreme Divine Nature, The Beginningless Beginning, excerpts from a conversation among five travelers concerning life's true happiness by Hirori Skovarada, Vegetarian, Part 1 of 2, on Words of Wisdom, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May the illuminating light of Allah shine on you and your loved ones. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD. Music